This week's Torah portion, we are in a Torah portion of Vayakel, we're in Jerba with the Hori family. I brought the Hori family once upon a time. We're going to study the teachings of the last of the Hori family, Rabbi Menachem Hori, from the book Kiryat Arba. The reason I'm bringing the Hori family is for a story you might remember. Uh, the head of the head honcho, the head of the family, Rabbi Rachamim Hori, we are told that in his time there was a plague and the angel of death would come to take the bodies that need to go and he'd come to Rabbi Rachamim's house and Rabbi Rachamim would take the notebook of the angel of death. No, the angel of death would give him the notebook and anyone that Rabbi Rachamim Hori could say, no, this person gave staka. No, this person helped an old, an old lady. Anyone that Rabbi Rachamim Hori could say a few good words about, the angel of death would not take them. What I'm trying to say is we need someone like Rabbi Rachamim Hori with what's going on today. So perhaps through teachings of the Hori family and Rabbi Menachem Hori, you know, it, it can't harm us. Um, okay. In this week's Torah portion by Akel, we have a little bit about Shabbos and the rest is about the Mishkan. We're going to focus on Shabbos. Um, Rabbi Menachem Hori starts by saying there's a fascinating teaching which teaches that Pinchas, he's not in this week's Torah portion, you know, Pinchas, you know, the, the, the zealot, you know, Pinchas is Eliyahu and Avi. Now that in itself, he says, isn't such a problem, we can explain that. Pinchas is Eliyahu. But what's even more perplexing to this odd teaching is that Pinchas is Eliyahu, how do we learn this? through two words in this week's Torah portion, Ele Hadvarim, these are the things. At the beginning of the Torah portion, we are told, you know, Moshe gathers the people and says, these are the things you need to know about Shabbos. And he says, you know, Ele Hadvarim. Rabbi Menachem Hori says, Ele Hadvarim is what explains, hints, alludes to that, that Pinchas is Eliyahu. He says that's even more perplexing according to his teaching, and we're going to try and understand it. So what does he say? He says, first look, let's look at the secret of Ele Hadvarim, these two words, these things. Ele has the numeric value of 36, right? Aleph, Lamed, Hey, 36. Hadvarim, if we look at Hadvarim, what are the things that we learn about Shabbos? Three things. No fire. If you use fire, you'll die. And that you need to uh, work for six days and on the seventh day you rest. Three things. Three things plus the 36 of Ele is 39. 39 are the 39 prototype uh, melachot, right? Uh, things that you can't do on Shabbos. He says, this is beautiful. However, he says, this, this secret that Ele Hadvarim teach us about Shabbos was, was almost not taught, hadn't it been for a teaching in a Bet Midrash thousands of years ago in the time of the Talmud. What is he talking about? Let's go back to Masechet Menachot, one of the very few pages in the Talmud where Rashi refers to Sefer Yetzirah, although that's not what we're talking about, it's just a cute fact in uh, uh, the 29th page. There we're told about Ravashi. Ravashi is going to learn how to write a Torah scroll. And we know that in his time, uh, people who wrote Torah scrolls wrote the letter He like the letter Chet, meaning the front leg didn't have a gap, but it was just a leg. And what differentiated Chet from He was that it was a bit fatter. That's all, except for the Bet Midrash of Rav. In the Bet Midrash of Rav, his pupils, his, the people that wrote the Torah scrolls, left a little gap, the He that we know today. So Rav Ashi goes to Rav's Bet Midrash to understand why they do this. And he says, it's very simple. Hay has to symbolize something. What does hay symbolize? Having the little gap that we keep symbolizes that if a person in this world, you know, strays off the right path, there's always room to jump back and repent through that little gap that we've left. So too they taught. Hashem, when he created the letter Chet, how did he create the letter hay? He took the letter Chet, he broke its leg, and through that breaking, hay then became to symbolize there's always a way to come in. He needed, we need that little gap. He says, this is beautiful. But hadn't we learned that in the school of Rav, Hayes would have looked like Chetz, and then our numeric value of Ele wouldn't have been 36. We would have been in a broch and would have had a problem. The Hay that comes to teach us about Tshuva, so just like the Hay that gives us then Ele, Ele Hadvarim, the numeric value of 30, 39, and the teaching of Hay that symbolizes Tshuva is the solution to our answer of how Ele Hadvarim connects to Pinchas and Eliyahu. How? So we just learned that the reason we can learn this teaching of Elad Varim, hide in them, the idea of the 39 of Shabbos, comes from the idea of Hay, and the reason Hay is differentiated from Chet is to teach that we can always do Tshuva. If you want to understand, Rabbi Menachem Chori tells us why Pinchas is Eliyahu, it's because of the secret of reincarnation. Why do we have Gilgul Neshamot? Why do we have reincarnation? So that a person can do Tshuva. So that if you didn't do tshuva in this world, in this lifetime, you can always come back and do it in another lifetime. 
Pinchas and Eliyahu, more than anyone, symbolize the idea of repentance. Not only because they, firstly, because their actions in themselves, right? Pinchas, what did he do? The Israelites were sinning with, with, with the Midianites. And Pinchas came and brought an end to it, teaching that there's always room for tshuva. Same with Eliyahu. Not only do these two individuals symbolize more than anyone the idea of tshuva and how one person can affect Klal Israel, all of Israel, but this is also the reason why Pinchas became Eliyahu, to always ensure that there is this character that always helps Israel do tshuva. And this is how he connects, right? So, so, so this is how we learn through the secret of reincarnation that Pinchas is Eliyahu, which symbolizes tshuva, this is the same element that allows us through the hay, the hay which is tshuva, the 36, connecting Elad Varim with Chins to Shabbos. I know it's complicated. Um, it took a long time to go through this. I'm not even sure I fully understand this, but the reason I'm bringing this is because it's beautiful and because it connects to Rabbi Racham and Khuri. But I do think in essence we can say that the teaching is Elad Varim, Hints to 39, which is what we can't do on Shabbos. And the only reason we have this is thanks to a teaching in the Bet Midrash of Rav, that differentiated between Chet and Hay. Hay then allowing for the numeric value in Ella to be 36 plus the three things 39. And once we start talking about Tshuva, this is how we can understand that Gilgul reincarnation, the whole purpose of it, is to allow Tshuva in another life to be. And this is how Pinchas Eliyahu, two individuals, not only symbolized Tshuva, but the one became the other. Shabbat Shalom from the island of Jerva. Keep safe, healthy, may we have Tshuva. Shabbat Shalom.